Oh, this is the RPG Pundit. Final boss in Internet Shitlords. And you know, today I had a, I've had a very complicated couple of weeks these last few weeks. A lot of things going on. Nothing to do with gaming, but other, other things I have to take care of that have been a lot of work. And, uh, got a, a bit of a headache today, probably from not enough sleep. So, uh, I really wanted to talk about something different. I wanted to talk about my, not talk about Arrows of Indra, or maybe about the new OSR game I'm working on right now. Which, by the way, I'm looking for someone to, who might want to publish it with me. It's going to be a full-sized OSR type game, probably a standalone, but it might not be, you know, I didn't, I thought Dark Albion was going to be a standalone product, and look at everything I made for that, so uh, hard to say for sure. Uh, if you're, a, whether you're a past or present publisher of mine, or have never published me, if you're curious about the possibility of publishing for me, with me, uh, then uh, give me a, give me a call. What I really need is someone who can do layouts and stuff, because they're, they're, the publisher could, can be, Spectre Press, they just don't want to do uh, all of the kind of production and uploading stuff, you know. So, uh, anyways, I write it and the other person makes it nice. <laughs> so, uh, makes it look pretty, I mean, like like Lion and Dragon, right? I couldn't do this. This uh, The cover, the, car, the art, everything in it, that's Dominic Cruze there, who's an incredible graphic artist and made up wonderful products and everything I did with them. Anyhow, um, <laughs> but I'm not going to really talk about those things. Instead, I find myself stuck having to talk about Wizards of the Coast, because uh, if you were watching Inappropriate Characters this past week on, on Sunday, we commented about this. Wizards of the Coast um, is being attacked for... <laughs> well, here's the thing, right? This is the this is this is how it is with the SJWs, right? They're being attacked for having done something but not done enough, which is what SJWs always love to attack people for more than anything else, right? Um, of course, if you've done nothing, then you're also attacked for doing nothing, right? That's also a, a thought crime, right? To not have taken action when they think what you should have done is taken action. But if you take action and that action um, is not to, their, to them, you know, what, what they really want from you, then it's never going to be enough of an action. And the problem comes if you're one of the people and things that they, what they really want is for you to not exist anymore, right? Because then nothing you do, nothing will ever, ever be enough, right? There's no, 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 no accommodation you can make that they will think is, is good enough it will always just be proof, even more proof, of how you have to be completely destroyed, right? Or completely um, removed because of your problematic nature, right? So, Wizards of the Coast had said something back, you know, when the, when the BLM protests slash Antifa riots were starting... Um, they had said something about Black Lives Matter, and of course, the SJW crowd um, went at them saying that this wasn't enough. And then there was, there was these, even some of the SJW people that they had hired specifically to, like, I mean, uh, I'm not going to doubt that this is true. The, the people themselves are now saying they were hired specifically as diversity hires to try to satisfy the um, the wolves at the door, right? And and I suppose that that's very possibly true, right? It's very possible. So, but now some of these people quit as an act of resistance against the evil of Wizards of the Coast for daring to say Black Lives Matter, but not to say it right enough, right? <laughs> and uh, and so Wizards then, you know, the, the Oriental Adventures thing happened, which I've talked about in my previous video here, where they claimed that Oriental Adventures, a, a product that was made what is it now, uh, 34 years ago, more, <laughs> it's hard, hard for me to remember, but uh, they, uh, I'm like Joe Biden here, they, uh, they had decades, that was made decades ago by a totally different company, but that they just happened to have on a print on demand, 
they they were saying that this is proof that all D and D everywhere is racist because it has some uh, Oriental stereotypes in it, which is nothing like the D and D Western fantasy settings, you know, like Greyhawk and the Forgotten Realms, which are absolutely full of also you know Western medieval stereotypes. Right? They're not this. This is Western medieval stereotype. This is real medieval, right? So, like the stereotype from the movies and the shows and whatever else, right? That from the from the from the dime store novels and from comic books. Um, yeah, that's what all D and D settings are. D and D settings are not authentic. At least there never, there never has been one that's been really authentic. And um, I guess the closest thing to some kind of culturally authentic thing is. Empire of the Petal Throne, but that's authentic of something that never really existed, right? So, and anyway, um, these guys then demanded that Wizards, you know, stop publishing Oriental events. And Wizards said, well, what we're going to do, listen, we're, gonna, <laughs> we're going to go back and revise our products, even our fifth edition products, even products like earlier editions of D&D itself, everything. We're going to revise anything that that could be problematic. We're going to change it, um, but we're also and and then for the like the legacy products, we're going to put this big disclaimer that says this is you know like problematic material that that was made and you know so people so no one accidentally buys it right um, and uh, and they and they're like oh please please stop being mad at us on Twitter you two dozen people that are mad on us mad at us on Twitter and of course the reaction to this was that's not enough. Right, boycott wizards is now the big thing that these guys are calling on. Right, they want wizards of the coast to be boycotted. They want D and D to be abandoned by people. They're trying to convince people to stop making D and D products. If you're like an independent maker of D and D stuff, and to 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 pick other games, story games, obviously, to play. So this is the this is the thing that they really want. This is what they're really. Uh, what they're really after is the destruction of D&D. Now, on Sunday in Inappropriate Characters, I had said, D&D will probably get absolutely the wrong message out of everything that's happening in reaction to what they've been, to what's been going on. And that's exactly what, what occurred, right? What they should have realized is we will never be able to placate these people. And they should also have taken a good hard look at the real numbers of what you see on Twitter and other social media. It's almost all entirely Twitter, right? I'm sure there's some people on Facebook that are also complaining. And then probably at like the perverted depths of, of SJW social media, you know, stuff like Tumblr or whatever. I don't know. I don't know where they go anymore. I think Tumblr actually is porn free now, but, but wherever they go uh, for the, for the weirder shit, you know, that's, that's where they're also complaining probably on somebody's private discord or something like that, but it's all the same tiny group of people. It's like, at, at most, like, a hundred people who have been the, 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 the cancers on the, <laughs> on the skin of role-playing since, you know, the time of, the, that, of, of uh, RPGNet, you know? Like, these are, the, these are all the same um, ridiculous people who are all a combination of pretentious story gamer and now new devotee of social justice. They've always been, you know, lefty liberal because that's always been trendy in their in their subculture, but uh, obviously they got on board the social justice train when they saw how effective it could be for as a means for them to obtain power and attack other people, which is all they really like doing. So the, the message Wizards should have seen was the response that was much bigger than the, than the criticism anywhere that it was posted outside of this like tiny sphere, this tiny bubble of Twitter SJWs, of Twitter leftists, they should have seen that 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 the response was basically to tell these 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 guys to fuck off, right? Like they, they had no interest in the SJWs, and they, and and the, the even bigger response in the general D and D community is silence because most people, if you do a even on Twitter, most people, if you do a, a Twitter search for the D and D hashtag, it's mostly just you know. Um, Teenagers and 20-somethings talking about their characters or people posting their dice or whatever, right? And it's probably the same on Facebook and on Instagram and on, on everywhere else, right? Um, not, nobody cares, right? The S, we, we know statistically that the SJWs are only about 8% of the human population. The problem is 
that they're not spread out evenly across the globe, right? And in a place like Seattle, they're obviously a much bigger portion of the human population, right? Like they're, the people who actually believe this, this bullshit are, are a large proportion of the people in Seattle where Wizards of the Coast is. So Wizards um, is, is vulnerable to being in its own bubble of thinking that these people are people of influence that have to be obeyed or, or something bad will happen. What, what bad thing will happen, Wizards? Do you really think that someone's going to make a woke competitor to D&D that's going to do better than D&D? That's going to, you know, because obviously everybody's just been playing D&D while they waited for someone to come out with an RPG that's all about teaching you how, how privileged you are, you know, <laughs> or that's all about, you know, uh, not actually going on adventures, but instead having like struggle sessions about social justice issues. So that you as the player will learn more about uh, you know, Marxism, right? That's what people want to play, right? No, they don't want to play D and D, right? So, like, it's just, it's just ridiculous that that you guys keep surrendering to these people, right? And you're gonna, and they're gonna do it again, probably. They're probably gonna do it on yet another thing. They're gonna find some other. They're gonna find some other thing that they can do. And I can tell you, the SJWs will once again say that is not good enough. Because their good enough is that you stop existing. They hate D and D. They hate Wizards of the Coast. They, they despise everything that the RPG hobby currently is. They've been trying to destroy it and rebuild it into something different since the days of the Forge, right? Since, so like, for 20 years now, what they've hated is the hobby as it is. And they want it not to exist anymore. And the, the hobby as it is are the people that, that write your checks, wizards, right? And that, and that write a tiny drop of Hasbro's checks in the larger sense, right? Um... So if you're catering to those people, you're also losing the other people, you know. Um, Venger is doing some kind of a, I, or, or he was saying something at least about doing some kind of a petition to, uh, that, to boycott D&D as long as it keeps uh, catering to the, to the woke crowd, right? <laughs> and, and of course, the problem is that a lot of the people in Wizards of the Coast aren't going to think that that matters. They're not going to care about that. And they probably shouldn't because, again, the numbers of people who are, like, really significant um, libertarian, cultural libertarian free speech warriors are not enormous either in the D&D hobby. I will, I'll note this, right? The vast majority of the D&D hobby doesn't care about any of this crap until it starts to affect their game, right? Just the same way that back in the day of 3rd of edition... The vast majority of D&D gamers didn't care about the, the Forge Wars and story gaming or anything like that until you tried to change D&D to fit the GNS theory of story gaming into a purely gamist game. And then you lost two-thirds of your customer base, right? So, so what will happen is that if your game stops being about D&D, if it stops being D&D, and it's turned into instead, you know, the, the neo-Marxist, uh, you know, postmodernist struggle session of the cultural revolution, the role-playing game, where what you have to do is, uh, you know, actually learn things like, you know, like, like as if it was a fundamentalist Christian role-playing game where you learn about the Bible, except instead you're going to be learning about, you know, the, the, the principles of deconstructionism and white privilege, right? <laughs> So if that's what the, the game is turned into by idiots, the same way that comics were turned into that by idiots, and the same way that certain movies and TV shows have been turned into that by idiots, those things fail, right? There is a noted process there of as the more that you surrender to these ideologies, the more likely you are to lose people who simply don't want that from their entertainment, and, uh, you know, you can summarize this in almost like this kind of algorithmical kind of mathematical structure that you could say um, that the percentage of wokeness as it increases generates an increasing amount of brokenness, right? <laughs> so if you're doing this, this is how you're going to fail. And, and the problem is, of course, that half or more of Wizards people are actually part of the SJW crowd, right? They have infiltrated that company, working their way along in, in petty jobs and uh, getting into places where they get to be influencers. And they're the ones that will go to the guys in the suits and tell them, no, 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 this is awesome. Everybody wants this. Everybody I know wants this. And they can even say that and be believable, 
right? They, you, you would believe them because in their little community there in Seattle, among people who, you know, are, are renting six people, renting a one bedroom apartment somewhere near the, the former Chaz, right? Of those people, uh, everybody there agrees on many things, right? They all agree that there's 52 genders. They all agree, or more, I don't know. I don't know what the count is right now. They all agree that the, the Chaz was incredible and that it's, uh, a, you know, it's somehow Trump's fault that it, that it ended. And they all agree uh, very, very strongly that D&D is a terrible game that symbolizes the, you know, horrible, terrible things like heroism and the heroic ideal and Western civilization and the, the ideas that there's, there can be good or evil. I mean, come on, how racist is that, right? Good and evil and stuff like that. They all agree on that, right? So in their little world, they think that's the whole hobby. But those are the things that, that most people don't want, and yet they're going to try to convince these people. Eventually, the Hasbro suits will be convinced that that whatever's going on here is is actually not working for them, and they'll that'll happen. Unfortunately, it'll probably happen after they get enough control over D and D that they radically change the game, right? And in radically changing the game, they will lose. Well, I mean, <laughs> let me put it this way: the Forge theory was set up to. To, to say that a game should only cater to, like, one-third of the role-playing audience, and that's exactly what they got, right? They made D&D 4th Edition into something that only appealed to a third of D&D gamers, and only a third of D&D gamers, therefore, bought 4th Edition. So if you're thinking about there's only 8% SJWs, you know, in the general population in, in, in the United States, anyways... Um, so if you're making a game that is only meant to appeal to SJWs, and they're eight percent, that means that for every hundred dollars you're going to be selling in players' handbooks before you change it into wokeness, you're going to be selling eight dollars after, pretty much, right? Like that, you're going to lose ninety-two percent of your customer base. And you know, I, on the personal note, I'm not too worried about that because everybody else, right, is going to go to play other things, right? There'll be people, somebody, thanks to our one, the wonders of capitalism and um, to, the, to the subculture that we have in gaming of things like the OSR, there'll be somebody that'll say, you know what? We, these games I know are not going to be fun, so we're going to make games that are fun. And people will buy other better games, games that are not made by and for people who despise you, the gamer, right? Games like Lion and Dragon. <laughs> And somehow, the more woke that the environment has become over the years, the more money I end up making. You know, I used to be a kind of a voice in the wilderness, in the middle of nowhere, and, uh, you know, making my little games. And everybody else, I would, I would get some other people in the designer world who were saying, yeah, I totally agree with you, but in secret. You know, and I had like one guy recently who said, I don't know a website, I can't tell you what it is, but he said... I totally agree with you, Pundit, but I'm, I'm too scared that they'll come after me and my family. And they're like, well, yeah, you probably should be scared about, you know, that there is a real risk in certain ways. But um, the, the idea is that you need to, to be prepared because sooner or later they're going to come after you anyways, right? Even if you say nothing, eventually saying nothing at all will be the crime too. So, you know, the, the thing to do isn't to stay there scared and hope that they'll miss you. And, and, and not drag you out to the gulag when they have the power to do that. The, the secret is to be ready and insulated so that if they try to destroy you, if they try to cancel you, you're really pretty much uncancelable, right? Um, that's, that's what you have to do. So anyways, the thing is, uh, you know, the, 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 the worse that the SJWs get, the more that people start to realize how bad they are and the more that people are going to move into other games and just like you know Pathfinder and the OSR um, were booming as a result of fourth edition if the next edition of D&D is written by the likes of people like you know Crawford and Perkins then uh, I'm, fa I'm fairly certain that it's going to be a really good time for independent OSR designers who are going to be doing really well on all the people who are not going to be buying Hasbro's products I sure hope somebody at Hasbro is listening to this somehow and ends up picking up this warning. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, odds are they're not going to, and odds are that instead they're going to dive right into this ideology 
and watch it wreck a valuable intellectual property of theirs. <laughs> because really at this point, internally, there's nobody to stop it. Anyway, that's it for today. If you like this video, please share it. Um, subscribe and hit the, the, the like button and hit the subscription bell. Um, share the video anywhere you think it'll do any good. <laughs> Whether that good is informing other people who who value this sort of stuff or whether you think it's uh, going to piss certain people off. And uh, if you like what I do, then you can please feel free to support me and uh, you can support me on Patreon or, or PayPal. And I do thank the people that, that, that do that. But if you want to support me and you want to get something back, then I suggest you take a look at my products, whether it's my my big, you know, uh, main RPG stuff like Lion and Dragon, Dark Albion, um, my RPG supplements like uh, the Old School Companion, um, Arrows of Indra, and uh, the other, you know, Cults of Chaos. Or if you want uh, for to to spend a little less money, but to get something interesting, and you're sending me a tip, you could say, be sure to check out the RPG Pundit Presents series. We've got 101 issues of RPG Pundit Presents including episode issue 100, which has been really a big seller, which is uh, Star Adventurer, which is $9.99 in print and PDF, and it's a, it's a complete OSR space opera RPG. And RPG Pundit presents 101, which is Tamlane, which is an exciting medieval authentic fantasy adventure for your OSR game, whether it's Lion and Dragon or any other OSR game or any other D&D-derived game, um, that is based on a re real medieval fairy folk tale. So it's really cool. Check that out. Check out, if you don't like those, to check out any of the other 99 issues. You can get them all for in between 99 cents to 4.99, except for Star Adventure, which is a little bit bigger and it's in print. Um, but you're, you're getting something interesting, something that you like, and you're sending me a tip in return. So that's one of the best ways to do it. But, uh, Thank you very much for listening. Thank you to everyone who's already purchased uh, a lot of stuff because every time, every time I make a video, there's a, a ton of, of uh, people that, that obviously go out and pick up RPG Pundit Presents issues, and I thank you for that. And, of course, they pick up my products, my, my bigger products. And I keep getting, you know, I, there's nothing that I like more than when I like, get a message somewhere, whether it's um, I'm a DM on Twitter or a message on, on, on the Facebook page or something like that. Saying, oh, I I just pick, got you know they, I just got the hardcover version of Lion and Dragon. I like it so much, right? Or I just picked up the uh, Dark Albion alternate cover on Lulu or, or stuff like that. Or, or hey, I checked out Star Adventure. And even if there's you know even if if, if a person is critical about say, oh, why didn't you include like starship making rules? And I'm like, well, I don't think that's very space opera. And he's like, I disagree, right? Someone just did a video about that where they. They, there's a video somewhere on YouTube, I don't remember where and uh, what, what the channel is called, but um, there was a video review of, of Star Adventure, um, which was generally fairly positive, except the guy just kind of read through it at the, like he was reading it as he was doing the review. He didn't pre-read it, which as a reviewer, let me tell you, you got to pre-read the products, otherwise you're going you're gonna to mess things up, you're going to be inaccurate about certain things, and he was. Uh, but generally he liked it, but he didn't like that it didn't seem to have any... Um, Starship creation rules, which it doesn't. It has really cool, you know, space opera, starship, space combat rules. It has that. And then it has, like, guidelines for very simple ways to make the, the starships, right? Like, there's just, you, there's stats, and you pick them depending on what type of spaceship you have. There's no, like, point-by system. You can't, like, min-max the weapons. But the DM can choose whatever he wants for the spaceship that you, you know, that you have. That, or that he wants to have available for you in the setting. And, and, you know, there's a wide variety of options. But it's all just, you know, pick and make it. There's no, it doesn't need a, doesn't need a design system. It's Star Space Opera. Anyways, I've spoken enough. The point is, pick up Star Adventure <laughs> and Lion and Dragon. And I don't know if you should boycott d and I don't think it, you know, with all respect to Venture's little petition, I'm not sure that that's going to matter because uh, people, there will be a natural boycott that will happen if the product starts to suck, which it will the more that the SJWs get their hands on it. Go woke, go broke, 
is pretty much a rule of economic nature at this point. <laughs> so that's it for me. Currently smoking um, near a poker and ar Argento Natural.